Say at the way it needs to be said in the time it's supposed to be said. So even if I receive the word from the Lord, if I don't say it at the right time, it's really not the word of the Lord. Help me today, Jesus. Okay. Uh, uh, let, 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 let me keep going. So I get out of here. The last point. I'm going to do this and I got to go. The Holy Spirit reminds us. His job, his job is to remind us to bring back to our mind all things whatsoever it is that Jesus has said. The Holy Spirit's job is to bring back to our mind what things ever Jesus has said. So, so when it is that I'm going through my issues, when it is I'm going through my challenges and my frustrations in life, it's always supposed to be that the Holy Ghost is working in me. They're supposed to be not only uh, him showing up, uh, not only him teaching, but he's also supposed to remind me how to deal with certain things. Sometimes we need a refresher course on how we're supposed to treat people. Sometimes we need a refresher course on how we're supposed to interact with one another. Sometimes even in our in our marriages, in our relationships, we need a refreshing course on how I'm supposed to love my spouse. That's right. That's right. That's right. But we think we got it because, you know, we ain't throwing pots and pans no more. We, we, we think we got it because we ain't fighting no more. Uh, we think we got it because we stopped talking about each other's mamas two years ago. But you still ain't got it because you don't know how to interact with each other. Oh, God, help me here. But Paul, like the Bible says that the Holy Spirit's job is to bring back to our remembrance what things soever Jesus said. So the thing is this, Minister Black, in order for him to bring back what Jesus said, I first have to know what he said. And if I never took the time, Brother Foster, to know what Jesus said about my wife, help me, I'll never know how to treat her. If I never took the time to learn what the Lord told me about my husband, I'll never really learn how to love him. So it's so important for me if I don't know right now, specifically if I got issues, I told y'all to talk about it, I'm going to continue to talk about it. If I got issues in my marriage, in my relationship, in my engagement, in my betrothal, and wherever I am in life, if I've got an issue there, I got to go back and find out what God said about it so that I'll know how to respond to it. If I got a problem learning how to discipline my children, I got to know what the Lord said about discipline it in order for me to be reminded about it. If I'm a child and I got a problem respecting authority, I got to know what the Lord said about respecting authority in order for him to remind me about it. It would be dumb of me to try to take a test for a ball night, but I never studied the material I'm being tested on. Even if the test was an open book test, I won't even know where to go to refer to where the answers are. So God says what I've got to do in this hour, D, is we as his people have to take the time to learn his word so that when we know his word, we'll understand what we're being reminded if it's his word or if it's my thoughts. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Amen. But I got to take the time to learn his word. Well, pastor, uh, that, that's, you know, that's a whole lot. When well, you're letting me know, thank you, Logan, for the amen, that you're letting me know right now that you really don't have the Holy Ghost in your life because when the Holy Ghost is in your life, you don't tell God you don't have time. Mm. Oh, help me. Help me, Jesus. Because the Holy Ghost becomes your time. Oh, help me, Lord. He says, Job said this way. He said that God is a redeemer of the time. What does that mean? God can take your two minutes that you got and make those two minutes be two hours. But if I'm never disciplined enough to actually give him the two, but continue to say, oh, God, I ain't got time. I got to go pick up the kids. I got to go cook dinner. How about learning how to talk to him while you're cooking dinner? Mm -hmm. That's right. awesome. Yeah. Learn how to talk to him while you're taking a shower, which you don't have time having sex. Yeah, help me today, Jesus. Okay, God, 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 God told me to say this. Now I'm going to say this and I'm out. Uh, the scripture says this in, 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 uh, in Lamentations, in Lamentations, uh, chapter 3, uh, verse 21 through 23, and I'm out. He says, this I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not concerned, because thy compassion fail not. They are new every morning. He says, great is thy faithfulness. Now, now Mr. Black, the reality of that text is this. Uh, the Lord says, I, I, I put the Holy Spirit in your life so that you can recall to your mind the goodness and the grace of God. The Holy Spirit is in your life so that when it is that times come that you're ready to quit, when times come that you're ready to throw in the towel, the Holy Spirit's job is to trigger you about what it is that the Lord has already said. So he says, this is what I'm recalling to my mind, that God, even though the time is tight right now, I'm still reminded of your mercies that have been shown toward me. That even though I don't feel like it right now, Sister Akasha, even though my body is racking with pain, 
Even though my mind is going a million ways from Sunday, the Holy Ghost's job is to come and to recall to your mind that even in times like this, it's still of the Lord's mercies that you're not consumed. We got to learn how to be appreciative of the fact that God shows us mercy to not consume us when we're in trouble. But he shows us grace and mercy to say, I'll allow Jesus, who is the Christ, to show up on your behalf in the hour and in the time of need. I got to get out of here. The Holy Ghost says, I'm reminding you that even when you were down and out the last time, you didn't stay down and out, but I brought you out of what you were in. When it seemed like you were going under the last time, I brought you out of that. And if I could take you out of that the last time, I need to recall to your mind that I'm capable and able of doing it again. Oh God, why is it that I got to continue to go down this same path? Why is it that I got to continue to go through this same trouble? God said, because you haven't allowed me to recall to your mind the last time I brought you out of it. You're still complaining about the pain. I'm looking for the thanksgiving about the last time I brought you out of it. You're still complaining about what you don't see. God said, I'm still listening for a thank you for the last thing that I delivered you from. You're complaining about the struggle you're still having. God said, what about the hallelujah for the struggle I brought you out of last year? God said, I want things to be recalled to your mind. But the only way it gets recalled to your mind is if I activate the power source of the Holy Ghost. Pastor, help me today. What are you talking about? He said it was on that day, that day of Pentecost, when it had fully come, that the power from God came down from heaven and it consumed everybody that was in the building. Well, what I need you to understand is that even though the power failed on the day of Pentecost, there had to come another time that they had to be refreshed again. There had to come another time that they had to be recharged again. Pastor, what are you saying? You might have gotten real good before, but if you haven't been refilled again, if you haven't been recharged again, you're running on a battery that's being drained. But God said, today I want you to tap in and plug back into the source. Get a refilling. Get a refreshing. Get a renewing. Get a reviving that I can remind you of what it takes to like the last time you tasted of it. It was the psalmist that said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I bless his name today because of the refreshing. I bless his name today because of the refilling. I bless his name today because of the reminding. Hallelujah. He said, I give you all the help you need. I bless every you. time you go through what you're going through, soft music right there, every time you're going through what you're going through, every time you're facing an issue that seems like it's insurmountable for you, he says, this is the time that you simply got to think back to the last time I brought you out. Well, Pastor, he never brought me out enough before you're lying to me, because if he hadn't brought you out of anything, I wouldn't be looking at you today. Wow. So because you're still breathing, you're here. I know he still can bring you out. Amen. Because you're still living, I know he can still bring you out. Because you're still going, that means you can go a little further. Wow. Yeah. Turn it down, please, sir. Turn it down. Amen. Now, we, we understand. I got to go here. Now, when the Holy Spirit comes, his job is to come to appear for us, to teach us, yes. and to remind us. So in order for God to speak a word like this today, he's saying that somebody either needs to have him show up, somebody needs to be taught something, or somebody simply needs to be reminded. You either need to show up, you need to teach you something, or you need to be reminded. That's my prayer call today. I don't have nothing else. That's the prayer call today. God, I need you to either show up, I need you to teach me, or I need to be reminded. If that's you today, I want you to come to this altar. That's all I got. I don't have a prayer call for them else. I mean, this ain't no general. This ain't no, if you just need some strength, this is very specific. I either need him to appear, I need him to teach me something, or I need him to remind me. 